And that's why there is great folly, family being united with itself and leaving God out of the equation. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12, it says, a threefold cord is not easily broken. That's husband, wife, or plus their children in between, and God at the center. No matter how united a family is, if they are separated from God, if one crucial member of the family is separated from God, they will not be able to overcome their issues. Because the word of God says that people that are not of the spirit cannot understand the things of the spirit. Somebody who is not a person of faith cannot understand the reason why you want to surrender yourself or to surrender your resources as an act of faith. You say, no, you must be joking. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? But God must be for us first. What is it that causes disunity between man and God? What separates me from God? This matter of disunity between God. Where did it come from? Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 2. God said, My hand is not shut. You people may have short hands on that side of, uh, you know, down there. But in heaven, my hands are everlasting. Say, behold, my hand is not short that it cannot save. There's no how low your death can be. Oh, church, I have seen people that have been beneath, beneath low, starting from myself, that the hand of God of mercy has reached down to bring up. He said, behold, my hand is not short that it cannot save you, that it cannot deliver you. He said, neither is my hair. Every you people can have a Blocked ear now. Your ear can be blocked with wax or with cutter. But in heaven, my ear is not blocked that I cannot hear. He said, but your sins, your iniquities have separated between you and I, so that I will not hear. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have a challenge in your life? Is there a challenge in your family? Let us first of all settle the matter of God. The unity that must be established between God and man. We must remove sin from there. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus cleanses from how many sins? All sins. First John chapter 3 verse 8. It says, the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. So if you are here today and there is sin in your life and you want your family to overcome the challenge that you are facing, you must present yourself first of all and say, Lord, Forgive me my sins. Have mercy upon me. And then we start the journey. Second thing that must be done is that you must do all you can to make sure that your loved ones are united with God. Because like I said earlier, if for example, husband and wife, the wife says, I belong to Jesus. The husband says, I belong to nobody. Or vice versa, I belong to myself. So it's time to pray. The wife, the husband says, I don't believe in prayer. You, you will be praying your prayer. But don't forget where we started from. He says, two people, any house that is divided against itself shall what? Shall fall. The Bible tells us clearly that there are some demons that, must, that can only be dealt with when there are two people dealing with them. He said, one shall put to flight what? 1,000. Two shall prove to fight how many? 10,000. So, you have no credit, no glory to your name to say, my wife is like this. My husband is like this. Oh! You will need to use prayer, fasting, character to make sure that that member of your family that is required for that unity to be, that partnership to complete, comes into Christ. And not just into Christ, but into maturity. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible gives the woman some advice. From verse 1 to 7, he says to the woman, why don't you let this man, why don't you let him see that your Christianity is not ofegi? 
He said, why don't you let him see by your character, by your meekness? He said, many people have won their husbands to the Lord that way. I have seen many. <laughs> many, many of my sisters don't like me when I say that. Anytime I say sister who says husband, I always tell my she's the first problem. <laughs> once, we do, once she can change, the guy will change. Easy, easy stuff. And then the, the, the easiest Samuel said, like Cornelius said, man has the ability to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It is far easier for the husband to say, oh yeah, let's go to church. And the wife will say, mm -hmm, well, she have to enter the car. But if the wife says to the husband, let's go to the church. What did you say again? If you say it again, you too, you, you would even go to that church again. <laughs> so I've, I've been speaking at a counseling session before in the church where the wife says, I don't bother to invite him to church because the last time I tried to invite him, he, he stopped me from coming to church for three months. So I just go by myself and leave him at home. Do everything possible. Remember our first principles. Two must be what? Together. But not just be together in Christ but also be together in maturity because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, it says as many as are so full of the Spirit of God that they are led by the Spirit of God. It says they are the sons of God. Like I shared last Sunday, there are certain things God does not give to children, just like you. God requires, says desire the sincere milk of the Word of God that you might grow thereby. So daddy is growing in the faith. His character is changing. But mommy says she doesn't have time. Or oh, madame is growing in the faith. But the husband says, I already know enough. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. Not iron sharpens wood. Not iron sharpens stone. Iron sharpens iron. The Bible even goes further. He says, do not be unequally yoked with what? Unbelievers. So it is possible for a man's testimonies to be held down because of the inconsistent nature of a partner. You know that. You say a chain is as strong as his what? Weakest link. You are hot on fire. But the wife is lot. Or the husband is neighbor. The fool. So if there's anybody here today who's trusting God to overcome the challenge in their lives, the first prayer point after you have sorted out yourself with God is to say to the Almighty God, you have to save this man. Not just save him, you have to mature him. You have to grow him. You have to help him to grow in the faith. And then, lastly, you must maintain godly unity in the family. Godly unity. You know, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the what? Sons of God. Don't forget our anchor. If you want to overcome any challenge at all, you must not allow the devil to divide you. you do everything humanly possible to make sure that the family is united. United in vision, united in prayer, united in action. Until the family is united fully, we keep moving around in circles. It is impossible to make progress when two people that are in the, that are co-pilots one wants to, I wish I could demonstrate that. One wants to go left and one wants to go east. What will happen? What will happen? Stagnation. And I need you to know that that's what happening, what's happening in many families today. So, what's going to happen? Aha! One person is going to have to decide. I'm going to forego my direction. And I will follow your direction. And you see where point number two is relevant. Because if the man is not saved, 
or the woman is not saved, and you decide to follow his uh, direction, everybody is going into uh, nowhere. So you've got to decide from now on, as a person, that you will be a peacemaker. That you will maintain the bond of peace in the family. Otherwise, the family is not moving anywhere. The challenge is, you know, in my part of the world, they say if the death inside does not kill somebody, the one outside can't do him any harm. Many families have lost the battle for their testimonies in the house by themselves. This whole thing will crystallize when you listen to the message of the first service. And that's where I want to close. Many years ago, I was, as a young minister, a younger minister, I was teaching our workers' training class on uh, working in unity. That was the topic. And to the glory of God, I'm not trying to. From when I became a Christian, if I get a chance to teach any class. <laughs> I remember when they asked me to teach Sunday school <laughs> in those days. I almost turned the Sunday school class into a Holy Ghost service. <laughs> I take it very, very seriously. Very seriously. So I was praying. I remember too when they said we should be doing evening service in our church. In those days, maybe the people that would come were about 10. I would lock myself in the room. And... But God did some awesome things in those midweek services, those evening services. Awesome stuff. So I was preparing for this workers group of maybe 15, 20 people. And God opened my eyes to Psalm 133 that we just read. Psalm 133 says, Behold how good and what? Pleasant. You know, God speaks to you in the language you understand. If, if you are a Yoruba man, he won't speak to you in Chinese and so on and so forth. If he wants to minister to a doctor, he would speak to him in medical terms. I studied geography in school. I, perhaps one of the few things that I was good at in school. And God showed me about something we call rock formation. There are some rocks that when water falls on them, the water runs off them. We have a lot of those rocks in eastern Nigeria. That's why you have a lot of the erosion. But there are some rocks in some parts of the world also that are formed with fissures. They, they, they fit it each other like gloves. So layer, like brickwork, like, like, like the wall. Like, you know, that's how they are. When you pour water on them, the water, they absorb the water. The water percolates. So God said to me, The reason why unity works is that when he pours the enablement from heaven, the anointing from heaven for you to overcome the financial challenge, the fruit of the womb challenge, the business challenge, when he pours it on husband and wife and family that are in fusion, because they are in an orderly fashion. The water, the anointing, the water of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is able to percolate and to go. And I'm sure you remember that the Bible says, the yoke shall be destroyed and the burden lifted them off his shoulders by reason of the anointing. So he said that's Revelation 1. And he said, but do I notice that even they are fused together, there are still some that are on top of the other. 